Welcome to QR Bill, Leveraging QR Codes for Billing and Payment. This is a NACHA Council for Electronic Billing and Payment informational webinar. The webinar is divided into five different sections where we have subject matter experts describing to you the different aspects of QR Bill. This is video section three of a five-part series and it's going to cover a biller's implementation of QR Bill. QR Bill is an initiative designed to increase electronic bill payment and electronic bill adoption, providing a bridge from the paper world to the electronic world using QR codes and mobile technology. Our presenter today for this section is Kathy Romano. Kathy is Executive Director of Bill Print, Payment, and AR Operations with Verizon. As Executive Director, Bill Print, Payment, and AR Operations, Kathy manages the processing and application of incoming customer payments for both the wireline and wireless segments of Verizon, as well as bill printing for Verizon Wireline. In her prior role, Kathy was responsible for the complete planning, implementation, and execution of Verizon's retail revenue assurance strategy, which has been recognized in the industry as cutting edge. During her 34 years with Verizon, and predecessor companies, Kathy has had a wide range of experience across the business in areas such as product line management, engineering, human resources, finance, IT, billing operations, revenue assurance, and others, resulting in a significant knowledge base and industry-leading vision with regard to the bill-to-cash uh, space. Kathy received her degree in mathematics and, and business administration from Gettysburg College. Today, Kathy is going to share with you Verizon's view on implementing QR Bill, and with that, I'll turn it over to Kathy. Thank you very much, Rob. So what you see on this slide is an example of what a customer will be seeing um, when they use a QR code to pay their bill with Verizon. So basically, we're going to put the QR code on the Verizon bill. It will give the customer the ability to scan that code and go either to our site if they're working through our interface or to a bank site or other bill pay provider um, within their site, give them the ability to scan that QR code and allow them to set up a recurring payment or some sort of a you know bank payment through, uh, through their site as well. Um, so the reader will go ahead and scan the code. In our case, it will link to our mobile web page at our site, and uh, the, the user will go through the, the process. What we're going to step through in the next few slides is what the experience will look like within our own interface within um, Verizon.com. And if you look to the right on this particular slide, you can see where we are envisioning putting the QR code on the bill, and the customer will have the ability to scan that. The other thing I will mention is we're planning on having this available to customers who are in a paper-free billing environment so that when they go onto our website and they pull up the PDF of their bill, they can also see the QR code there and scan the QR code from that bill. So overall, what are we trying to do at Verizon? We're trying to enhance our customer experience and give our customers more options for how to pay us. We're trying to decrease electronic payment errors. Uh, when the banks set up, when a customer sets up an account with a bank, they often put the wrong account number in or they may fat finger it or transpose numbers or misinterpret what is on our bill as far as what they put in there. So this gives us the opportunity to improve the quality of what is coming out of the banking sites because if we get a wrong account number, we can't always find that customer, and it's a poor customer experience for both our customer and the bank's customer, who is the same customer. Um, we are looking to increase our auto pay enrollments and our paper-free billing enrollments, and we'll be um, talking a little bit about that as we go through. So on the initial phase, we expect to put this um, QR bill code on all consumer and general business, so those are our small business customers, on the wireline side of the business. 
if we find that it's successful um, as we, you know, work through the initial kinks of the implementation, we will be rolling that out in our wireless space into our large customers, our large business customers. Um, the QR code will take that customer, in our case, to a, what we call our unauthenticated flow at our mobile website. So unauthenticated means basically the customer will be coming in and not authenticating to do more processes other than bill pay. If that customer is a registered customer, then they will be presented with some additional options, including um, the opportunity to pay from their wallet. If the customer wants to do other processes, such as go into their account, go into their bill details, those kinds of things, then they will be required to authenticate. Um, and as I said earlier, um, the next phase will include the large business customers, and then we'll move from that into wireless. Um, and then we also will expand into enrollment for our auto pay options and our paper-free billing. So here are some sample screen captures of what we expect to show our customers. So if you look at the first uh, graphic there, what you see is that uh, the payment date and amount will automatically be populated if the customer wants to pay the full amount. They can change that, of course, if they want to pay less than the full amount. Um, in the case, again, where the customer has an existing wallet, their bank account information will be pre-populated, and then they will have the opportunity to check, uh, to pull down on that payment account to select another option if that's not how they want to pay. Um, payment confirmation will come via email. Um, you'll get it on the screen, and then they'll get a follow-up via email. And then if a customer wants to take additional action on their account, then they will have the opportunity to provide their user ID and password to authenticate to move into the remainder of the site to do some additional work. Okay, so the questions really are the things that you need to think about as a biller is, how does it integrate with our current electronic bill pay offering? We are very anxious within Verizon to encourage our customers to pay via ACH. Uh, we believe because it's a more cost-effective option for us that we would like to increase that as much as possible. So this is one opportunity for us to add convenience to our customers, to improve our collections, and also to um, help to promote ACH. You really need to think about security concerns. I know that our data security folks are very involved in our implementation, and you want to make sure that you are making a decision on what you can allow a customer to do without authentication and what you're going to require authentication for. Um, in how do, how do you allow users to change the default funding source? This is another question that you need to ask yourself because you want to make a decision, as we did, whether you're going to allow that customer to make a change. Which QR code, code reader, generic or proprietary, if you go with something proprietary, you have the option of doing the kinds of things that we are looking to do where we can go both to our own website and we can go to third-party sites and use the same QR code. If you use a more generic reader, you're going to expose some data potentially that you may not want to expose, so that becomes more of a challenge. Um, again, where are you going to place it on the bill? How are you going to make sure that it's top, that it's readable? What is the you know competition for real estate on your bill? There is a lot of competition within our company on you know between marketing messages and um, QR codes for billing purposes because we're also going to be adding a QR code for marketing purposes on our bill as well. Um, how are we going to track and report? That's huge for me. I make sure that every project we implement has the ability to track everything that uh, we do and all of the customer interactions so we can properly adjust if things are not working the way we expected them to. Every project has to have a measure of success that so you need to define ahead of time. How are you going to measure whether what you've done has been successful? You know, in my world, one of our biggest measures of success is how many customers are actually using it? You know, are we, by putting it on the bill, does this create another avenue for customers to pay us? 
And once we get customers using it, then we have opportunities to actually expand the ways that customers can use it. Um, how will we provide support to the consumers? So we already have um, a, an ability for customers who are interacting us with ele electronically to go to our what we call our e-center to support them. But this is something that's an important question. Going on to the next slide, so user experience. Um, again, these metrics become very critical in measuring whether your user experience is being successful. So your, your size, your placement, how you in instruct the customer to use it, how it works on various devices, these are really important, and so we need to be tracking that to understand where, whether we have a problem in the experience that we need to resolve. Um, the ability for them to register for e-billing and for um, recurring payment is, is, again, huge for us. And the ability to change their default funding source and to edit anything that appears to be an error is another thing that the users need to be able to do. On the project side, um, there are many, many things that we need to be paying attention to, similar to any other project, but things like, are we, is, does the QR code reader work? Does it work on every possible device? You know, as a, a provider of wireless service, we're very sensitized to the fact that different devices actually react differently with um, apps, so that's something that we typically will test. What's going to be implemented when, at what time? How are we going to promote this? And we've decided initially that we're not going to promote it until we're making sure that it's working really well, but then we want to promote it after that to really push customers to utilize this way of making a payment. How are we going to notify customers? Again, um, we have provided you some information on our vision of what we're going to do in terms of customer notification, but there are other ways to notify customers. How are we going to handle any errors that fall out? Again, we have a process in place already for um, our uh, Verizon mobile website, but others may need to come up with a process that they need to put in place. What are the biller-defined fields? How do we handle the portion of the QR code that is not the generic standards that are, are to be used for the industry? Um, we need to look at our terms and conditions to make sure that there's nothing that needs to be changed there. I will tell you there's probably not a thing I do in the payment space that I don't have my attorneys right beside me reviewing everything to make sure that we're not violating any laws or rules. And, of course, providing the customers with proper help and tutorials, um, providing good customer service, and making sure that anything that we do works from an accessibility standpoint um, for ADA. So those are the things that we are working on within Verizon. Um, we expect to implement at least in a limited basis before the end of the year. And let me now turn over to Rob Unger, who will take it from here. Thanks a lot, Kathy. And as a longtime Verizon customer, I'm certainly looking forward to uh, scanning the, the QR code. And, and I'm a paperless customer, so I'll, I'll do that from my screen. So that's, that's very exciting. Thank you for that overview. Folks, if you'd like uh, any further information about QR Bill, you're, you're welcome to contact me. Happy to provide the technical specification to you. We have some other resources as well. And um, what we're going to do now is uh, we're ending Section 3 and invite you to continue to the next video, which is uh, Section 4 of the five-part series on QR Bill, where we're going to talk about a financial institution implementation of QR Bill with Wells Fargo. Thank you very much.